Welcome to today's video. I've rented a lovely Model 3 from Toro off uh, Jonathan here. He's crazy enough to lend his pride and joy to people on Toro so they get to experience what an EV is like. I'm in the lovely, lovely American state of Hawaii. What what gave you, what made you sort of run around out your pride and joy? Uh, supply and demand, I think, okay. is, uh, is probably the best way to put it. So uh, I had one of the first Model 3s on island and um, Honestly, if I run it 10 days a month, it pays for itself. And running it 10 days a month is, is not too difficult to do. Yeah. So uh, I've been doing that for the last year, and and uh, that's that's worked out pretty well. So, yeah. and, and uh, you know, the Turo renting crowd tends to be a little younger, a little more conscientious about the car. They understand that you're renting someone else's car. Yeah. And so uh, I haven't had any really bad experiences uh, with renters and yeah. so it you know keeps going yeah i think the thing with toro is i think because you know you're renting it from someone rather than a rental company yeah. you you have this sort of i want to give the guy his car back and i think the thing with tesla people who rent teslas tend to be kind of the same mindset as everyone else yeah and, and i think tesla owners tend to be a, a bit more evangelistic yes. than <laughs> than you know chevrolet owners or whatever and you kind of want to show off your car a little yeah. bit which is fun well, thank you very much, yeah. and uh, I'm going to look forward to this for the next four days. So today, you're going to find out, should you buy a Tesla Model 3 in Europe? So one thing about the Model 3 is the doors have a very nice sort of feel. feel a lot better than the I-Pace ones. This is the all-wheel drive long distance. Uh, sorry, not all-wheel drive, sorry, rear-wheel drive long distance. Uh, but they all come with this full panoramic glass over roof which is just beautiful and then the boot is huge and it's got a little bit of a sun vent there which lets a bit of natural light in the boot during the day there's also a, a, a normal light there but it also is to let sound through as well for the radios etc and bass and then you've got the front boot initial thoughts of the model 3 it's it's a pleasure to drive it really really is the one extra that i definitely 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 am happy to have in america driving on the right hand side of the road or on the wheel on the left hand side is autopilot it just makes driving abroad much easier especially on the highways where being a right hand drive driving person i'm used to centering to the right which everyone else centers to the left in america so it kind of stops you having any accidents especially on the tight narrow uh, motorway roads or as they call them highways so the autopilot has been a godsend over here even the wife has slightly enjoyed it she said it's all right which is from the wife is, is amazing she keeps telling me off every time i'm not holding the steering wheel 100 percent of the time but she's slowly getting used to it she did say that she probably trusted to drive herself drive her to work in the morning which is basically just a straight road for her all the way through this one does recognize speed signs at the moment which is amazing so a couple of things to note the speed limit for the tesla model 3 is up here autopilot is obviously on at the moment and that's all displayed here and then your satellite satellite navigations here you've got heated seats which are a bit pointless obviously in the hot climate of hawaii but obviously in england it'll make a lot of sense heat controls are here on and off just turn that off because it will ruin the sound and then these are the air vent controls. You can decide where you want them to go by pulling them. And then you've got your feet controls, etc. auto climate, and then off. And then as you can see on the autopilot, it tells you all the size of the cars, car behind us, car in front. And then obviously no hands at the moment and we're going around the corner. So I might have to just take control. So I've took control there. To click autopilot on, what you do is you double tap this stick here, and then that takes autopilot on here. And that's full full steering wheel and obviously brake and obviously the uh, the acceleration. So if you can see at the front here, is that the car in front stopped, and we've automatically stopped without me pressing the brake. And as soon as the car in front starts moving, the car starts accelerating and going forward. There's an update that's just been come through today, which is an update for a power update that Tesla released for all their Model 3 owners. 
So this is going to drop from its current top speed to its new top speed. I'm going to try a 0 60 test with Laura, who's never, ever, ever done a 0 60 in a Tesla yet. Excited? <laughs> Are you excited? No. One, two, three. Sixty. <laughs> Did you like that? No. <laughs> Was that quick? Yeah. <laughs> Ready? Oh, I got you in, so haha. -ha. Ready? Nope, I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, didn't you? You just smiling. Look at your little happy face. Ready? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Did you like it? No. Why are you laughing then? Yes. <laughs> the other thing to note is you use your mobile phone as the key, which at first seems a bit odd, but it really makes a lot of sense. Obviously, cars like the Renault Zoe and other things that have got automatic self-entry works exactly the same with the Tesla phone with your mobile phone it detects your mobile phone shuts the door it opens the door you get in the car as people know Tesla's are already already started you just press drive and you drive you do have a valet key in America which is basically exactly the same as a NFC chip but to open the car as it says here you have to tap it on the windscreen up here and then to start it you tap it just below the cup holder at the bottom down here and that will start the car so basically if your phone does go flat you just keep this in your wallet at all times and you can still start the car but your mobile phone has got permanent USB charger in here so in theory your phone should always be charged and never flat but if you have got that worry that your phone does go flat when you're out if you keep this key card in your wallet at all times you can always start your Tesla. A couple of the other things to notice in the middle the guys had the the, the thing wrapped and it's usually like a piano, a piano black plastic but he's wrapped it in the middle because he said it gets covered in fingerprints. There's adequate storage everywhere. There's storage down here, there's storage underneath, there's a place for charging your phone at the front, there's, uh, there's places for charging uh, storage underneath there. There's basically storage everywhere in the whole car. It's just full of it. Now, the one thing you all want to know is build quality. What was the build quality like? Now, personally, I couldn't see any faults on the interior. I went through the whole interior trying to find something wrong with it so I could videotape it for the Tesla haters and just say, there you go, there's, there's only one fault. Fortunately, I couldn't find any. The exterior, again, I couldn't see any major panel gaps. Now, people really, really go on about panel gaps to Tesla. And weirdly, this is not an industry sort of anomaly to Tesla. Loads of car companies have panel gaps on their new cars when they're delivered to customers. I've often seen Land Rovers, Renaults, pretty much all, all majority of makes having panel gaps on it. Now, I couldn't find any panel gaps on this Tesla, so I don't see the issue. A lot of people have reported that on the Model uh, 3, when you open the boot, the rain comes off the windscreen so quickly it floods the boot. Tesla have currently sorted this problem and it's now got an extra high lip, so European models and UK models obviously are not affected by this. The actual finishing of the car in this premium high spec is very nice, but you can appreciate when the 35 gram model comes to the US and obviously to the UK, the premium build quality on the interior won't be there, but the rest of the finishing will be to Tesla's high specification. I just thought I'd leave you with some lovely scenery by the way from Hawaii. I absolutely fully recommend it. If you can afford to go and see Hawaii, it is a beautiful island, one of the most beautiful places I've ever actually seen in my entire life. It's volcanic, it's beautiful, it's scenic. It's just a stunning place to drive this Model 3. When this does come to the UK, personally, I would probably go for a standard range um, four-wheel drive model if they'll allow a four-wheel drive on the standard range otherwise I'll go for whatever model the four-wheel drive comes the cheapest in because where I live in uh, Derbyshire I get quite a lot of snow so I could do a four-wheel drive system however I wouldn't be off put from buying the rear-wheel drive standard range this obviously is long range but on Hawaii in this island there is no superchargers and you basically if you're going somewhere the island's not too big but you kind of want that range to always get back to where you're going because there's no obviously fast charging supercharging stations there but in the uk the standard range should be pretty much sufficient especially with new v3 speeds are peaking at a thousand miles 
per hour. Thank you very much for watching this week's video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below if you enjoyed it. And also, I'll see you again next week. Thanks very much, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Thank you.